So this is control of temperature or thermoregulation, as it's also known. Now, the human body maintains itself at approximately um, body temperature 37 degrees Celsius. Now, this is slightly different in different parts of the body. For example, the extremities like the fingers, uh, the hands, the toes, um, even on your nose and ears, will be a little bit colder. But the core body temperature, if you like, the temperature of the vital organs in the body and the head will remain around about 37 degrees Celsius, sometimes slightly higher, sometimes very slightly lower, but only within about one degree Celsius each way. Um, if the body's temperature starts to change, then um, there will be a response to try and bring it back to its um, ideal temperature. So these are the things like um, sweating, which sweat is produced from glands in the skin, and that will produce water that will evaporate and as it evaporates it takes away heat energy away from the skin uh, which would cool you down and also things like shivering which is rapid contraction of muscle muscle contraction requires energy from respiration which would also release some heat uh, quite a lot of heat so shivering will actually warm up as well um, slightly more complex way um, to control temperature uh, involves the blood vessels, specifically the capillaries in the skin. And this would be, in the first case, vasodilation. So if we imagine this is the, the surface of the skin, underneath that we have a network of capillaries and they're supplied with blood. And if you are too warm, this network of capillaries near the surface of the skin will have plenty of blood in it. This is why when you're too hot, um, the, the skin will appear red and heat will be lost more rapidly through the surface. In the case of being too cold, we get what's called vasoconstriction. And the difference here, here's the skin again, is that the blood vessels supplying these capillaries are pinched shut by muscles. Okay, so it's been pinched at the ends, and it means that not much blood goes to those capillaries. And if you compare them, there's much less blood flow there. So in vasoconstriction, less blood flow to the surface of the skin. Uh, the skin would appear paler and less heat is lost as a result. Now there are two specific um, problems <coughs> excuse me, you have to be aware of uh, for heat control. We'll do hypothermia first which is when um, body core temperature um, drops below 35 degrees Celsius. This is when you start to have problems. Um, the symptoms would be things like confusion, um, drowsiness and slurred speech. One of the problems for someone suffering from hypothermia is they might not be able to tell you or even understand that there's a problem because of um, the effects it has on um, the brain. Below around 30 degrees uh, it's possible a person will slip into a coma and at about 28 degrees and lower, um, breathing would stop. And there are thousands and thousands of deaths per year from hypothermia, um, mainly older people. Um, babies are also at risk of hypothermia. They're not able to um, control their own body temperature very well. The other one, this is the one that people tend to forget or get mixed up on, is heat stroke. And heat stroke is when your body can't lose heat fast enough. Um, for example, if you are in humid conditions, which means there's a lot of moisture in the air. If you think about if you've ever been somewhere really hot, when it's felt very muggy and, and moist in the air, that's humid. When it's humid, you can't sweat, or you, sorry, you do sweat, but you, it doesn't evaporate. The water, it, there's so much water in the air, it's just not evaporating, so you can't lose heat very effectively. Um, it can also happen 
if you've got a fever, if your body is um, rising its own temperature in order to fight off infection. Um, if you do a lot of exercise, we're not just talking about having a bit of a run around, perhaps people who are doing things like marathons um, will be particularly at risk of that, and exposure to heat. So perhaps if you're in a hot place, um, direct exposure to heat can lead to um, heat stroke. Really looking at a problem where the body core temperature goes above 42 degrees Celsius. Um, symptoms, dizziness, confusion. Um, your pulse will also slow, which is going to be a problem because that means that there isn't the blood getting pumped around the body. Um, just to compare the treatment for these two now. Treatment for hypothermia. Um, you insulate the body, you insulate the core. Um, gentle warming. You would not try and, for example, put this person in a warm bath. Uh, that can cause shock that can actually kill. Um, and you don't give them food. Food will tend to slow the metabolic rate um, and cause further problems. Treatments for heat stroke um, using air or some kind of fan, electric fan perhaps, to cool them down, um, sponging them with water, with cool water, or wet towels. Okay, the last point here is the detection of all this. If you remember when we were talking about detecting systems, we would have three parts to it. We'd have um, 